Hi, this is Chippy from carrypad.com and I've got the AC100, Toshiba AC100 here today and I've been testing the Ubuntu build that's been uh, hacked onto it. Some guys in the community have managed to build a new bootloader and uh, Ubuntu OS for this 10.10 .10, which is quite interesting. So in this video I just want to show you um, boot up, show you around some of the applications and talk about what's working and what's not working. So this is the Toshiba AC100 with Ubuntu 10.10. Ubuntu so we've got standard uh, Toshiba AC100 here. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen it, it's an Tegra 2, um, well, ARM, Tegra 2 based device. Sorry, NVIDIA Tegra 2. That's based uh, on an ARM core, dual core, one gigahertz uh, CPU. It's an Android device, very thin and light, 800 grams, 299 euros. Nice keyboard, nice screen. Um, but Android 2.1 is not the best on it. So what's happened here is that someone has created a new bootloader and a mechanism to flash the bootloader on this, which now gives you the option to boot from an external SD or USB um, drive. Now I've got the, a Ubuntu build on here. It's Ubuntu 10.10 .10 release candidate, a netbook build for ARM v7. So that's on here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna boot from that and you do that by going into the uh, recovery mode on the device and the recovery mode on this has been modified such that you can boot for um, uh, from an SD or a USB card so that's going to boot now but one thing to note while this is booting is the SD card is going to be slow this is not like an internal hard drive or even an internal uh, flash drive the write speeds and read speeds on this will be way, way lower than you'll get on, on a disk drive and a flash drive. The controller is uh, much lower quality as well. So um, there will be problems with this. Also, this has only got 512 megs of RAM. So you can expect some problems when you're running a full desktop OS like Ubuntu. Um, you need, we need to get this uh, slimmed down to, to work uh, perfectly within um, 512 megs of RAM. So. Uh, keyboard is working, mouse button is working, and uh, what I'm going to do is zoom in so that you can see uh, a few apps as I, whoops, as I go through. So let's put my password in, and we'll go straight into the desktop UI. I'm going to turn the lamp light off here so that it looks better on the screen, and you'll see it's the netbook uh, rebuild, netbook version or netbook remix they call it and there's a number of apps pre-installed. I've also installed some apps over the top as well. Um, and the UI is pretty nice, it works uh, well. Um, you've got uh, the um, menu bar on the left and then uh, the icons for the applications on the right. And this is actually still booting right now, some games. And that's the sort of effect you get because of the drive. Uh, there's a lot of things trying to access the drive, so um, not surprising that it stops sometimes. Right, let's go back to uh, my favorites. And let's go to the lowest common denominator of web applications. It's the browser. And on here we've got Firefox 3.6. And this is a full desktop web browser that's been recompiled for ARM. And you won't see any difference really uh, between this and your desktop browser. And uh, what I want to do is show you some, some features. Um, Plugins are working, so I've got the synchronized plugin. You'll see synchronizing indicator uh, on the bottom right. Um, so it's actually synchronized all my uh, bookmarks, all my settings, all my cookies, all my passwords, and some favorites as well. Um, but let's just go to uh, engadget.com just to give you a feel for um, how quickly this is. We're going over Wi Fi here, it's a local Wi Fi. Uh, hotspot I've got down here so reception is good and um, speed is good and there's Engadget loaded up it's not a touch screen so no browsing so it's uh, page up page down buttons to scroll around and uh, that's really not too bad right I mean there's a fairly hefty amount of images there uh, there's also a lot of JavaScript certainly in the documents and document uh, sorry the comments and the comment indicators um, the only thing that isn't working is Flash because the Flash, um, Adobe Flash hasn't been compiled for ARM 7 in this version of Ubuntu. I expect that will change fairly quickly. 
Um, let's try another web page. So let's go to uh, carrypad.com. Um, carrypad.com. The keyboard's quite nice on the AC100. And that's pretty quick. It's quite impressive how quick this is. It's getting up to netbook type speeds. Uh, now, if Flash was installed, it would be a different matter. That would slow it down quite dramatically. And if you have a number of tabs running, I'm sure it's also going to slow it down a lot. But let's let's go to a couple of apps that you wouldn't expect to be running on what is effectively a, a smartphone platform here uh, with a large screen and keyboard. Google Docs is a quite a heavyweight application um, and one that doesn't work under Android 2.1. And um, he says... <laughs> as he tries to create a new dog and it doesn't work um, and it's gone to the mobile version of the website there um, that's interesting because I was creating a document earlier let's try a, uh, a spreadsheet maybe it's just a problem with the um, docs there okay the spreadsheet and that was the spreadsheet that I was using earlier and it was working so um, let's uh, quickly test this and uh, we should be able to uh, equals two minus a three zero yeah so that's that's working um, the other thing that is working let's get away from that and really quite nicely is is mail so if I go to mail, uh, that will bring up the full JavaScript desktop enabled version of mail and it's pretty quick to start up and scrolling works and opening and contacts work and all that sort of stuff. The same with calendar. Calendar seems to be working okay. And as to be expected, this is Firefox 3.6 and there's no reason it shouldn't be working. Um, so you've got a full Productivity application suite, apart from that to uh, Google Docs writer that I'm going to check, double check on. Uh, I don't know why that's not working. Um, it seems to be working pretty well. Let's go to Reader. That's a heavyweight um, JavaScript app. And usually takes 10 to 12 seconds to start on any netbook. Um, file transfer is going on now, and there you go. And that re that was. 10 to 12 seconds and all the shortcut keys work so let's go I think L is the next one or is it J? J yeah and the full screen working probably and full screen in Firefox if I go yeah so really not bad at all that's uh, boom, boom, boom. really good right so browsers working well in fact browsers working better than any other smart <laughs> smart device that I've I've used before but that's not all because there's uh, other apps that are working pretty well on this so the GIMP image editor is working pretty well GIMP is a fully featured image editor of course it's uh, free software and it's got some features in it that require a fair bit of uh, CPU processing power so I want to just demonstrate uh, one thing um, file that I was working on earlier what we're going to do is apply a filter to this and this is a let's see if I can find it where is it cubism that's a fairly CPU intensive um, process and see how fast it goes through that now that's not as fast as a netbook but it's really not that slow you're not going to worry about hanging around uh, too long for that and there you go that's that's that done and uh, controls it to get out of that so actually quite a usable uh, GIMP okay just very quickly this is the Samwell photo manager um, this is more like your Windows Live gallery so um, what you can do is take an image and do some basic editing and stuff on it but you can also do publishing so this is a one click publish to it's a Flickr feature um, which is quite nice as well. So that was the uh, image editor, internet stuff. What have we got here? I want to show you Gwiba, which is a Twitter client. Uh, fairly heavy weight actually in terms of memory usage. I noticed it using a lot of memory, but um, 
it works and it's got some nice features and if you're looking for you know a Twitter client uh, to run in the background that is going to work so we're going to put that to the background uh, what else open office word processor and this is not a lightweight bit of software by any means um, but it's uh, working startup time yeah a little bit slow because it's running from the SD card but there you go fully featured um, uh, open office uh, writer application there um, you're probably going to have some issues with uh, let's say stickiness uh, as, it, as it writes to the, um, the SD card every now and again uh, so you probably get some a few hangs but uh, I think that's going to work pretty well. I'm again, pretty surprised. Um, things that aren't working though, uh, the webcam, uh, movie playback and sound. So three very, very important things if you want to complete uh, netbook uh, these days. Uh, without sound that's going to be a bit of a problem. I hope that can be fixed. Uh, movie playback uh, doesn't seem to work either despite having installed some codecs. Um, Games. Let's show you a couple of games on this. This one's Galaga, and uh, let me show you how do I start this one. Uh, huh? Is it K? There we go. And uh, I'm using keyboard controls. Now I'm guessing this is not a 3D enabled uh, experience. This is all running off CPU, I guess. Well, that is, seems quite good. <laughs> Definitely for some potential there, anyway. So, um, how do I get out of it? Q. Okay. Um, and but some games aren't working. So, Defend Gwyn seems to crash. And um, K Bounce also. That's going to go away in a second, hopefully. K Bounce also seems to to crash as well. So not everything working, and I guess that's to do with things like 3D graphics, sound, um, are causing problems there. Um, anything else I need to show you? Yes, there's one other thing, and that's the Ubuntu Software Center. So full builds are available of all the packages, and apparently um, ARM are building, sorry, Ubuntu are building about 90% of packages uh, under for ARM7, so most of what you'll find in the normal repositories are here, and the software center is actually quite nice. It's it's a lot better than it used to be. There's a um, nice user interface and a good search capability, and there's even now an, a paid-for app store. And there's nothing in that bit yet, but uh, that'll be interesting to see how how that works. And uh, it's fairly slow to install stuff, of course, because it's on the SD card, but uh, that is working. Um, right, let's close that, and I think that's pretty much all I need to say about it. So the, the things to, to note are that the um, memory is only 512 megs, and Ubuntu 10.10 .10 Netbook Remix is a little bit heavyweight, needs to be trimmed down. Um, there's no sound, no video playback, uh, the camera's not working, and these keys at the top of the uh, device up here um, sometimes map to function keys, uh, sometimes map to the functionality behind the key that was intended under Android, so um, that's a little bit hit and miss there. Um, backlight adjustment on the screen is not working, um, and looks like battery drain is pretty uh, significant uh, on this as well. I'm looking at probably around three hours of and battery life on this before the battery is dead, which is half of what you get under Android. So clearly, um, that backlight is one of the issues. But uh, just getting the um, CPU and everything to to calm down uh, is an issue, and that's probably to do with the number of processes that are running under Ubuntu here. That needs to be sorted out. Um, What's the other thing? Oh yeah, of course, it's, that it's running on an SD card is also an issue and that needs to be uh, sorted out. So I think we should take this as an indicator of two things. Number one, that the Tegra 2 platform seems to be powerful enough to provide some sort of acceptable experience, uh, certainly with web browsing. 
uh, and other CPU uh, focused tasks. And that um, the AC100 itself could be hacked for this and other Linux based operating systems, and that includes things like Mego, of course, Android 3, um, as we've shown here, Ubuntu, and uh, there's a plenty of other stuff that could be uh, hacked onto here as well. So, this is just a starting point, and I expect things to change fairly quickly. This is just two days after the first build was released for the AC100 and uh, I think that shows um, things are going to happen fairly quickly. So this is uh, Chippy from CarryPad with the Toshiba AC100 running Ubuntu 10.10 .10 release candidate netbook edition for ARM v7 uh, thanks to uh, guys in the Toshiba forums and there's a couple of uh, websites I'm going to flash up on the screen now that you should check out if you're into hacking the AC100 and I hope to come back to you soon with uh, progress, more information about how things are going on these uh, smart book style devices. So again, Chippy from CarryPad.com. Check out, check out CarryPad.com for some more consumer based uh, handheld and mobile devices. And we'll be back, back soon on the next video. Don't forget to rate and follow us on Twitter and YouTube. Thanks for watching.